Hi everybody, it's Miss Moxie and today is Wednesday, January 16th. Today we had a two hour delay and it was an A day, so I met with fifth block and seventh block. Today we learned a lot about air masses and how they're controlled by temperature and humidity and cold fronts and warm fronts. Let's take a look at the agenda. So again, today is Wednesday, January 16th. It's an A day. We're in the middle of our weather and climate unit. Our objectives for today were I can identify types of air masses and origins of air masses, fronts, and accompanying weather. Like Our second objective was I can read and interpret a weather map containing fronts and isobars and isotherms. So we started off class with a quick video from the Weather Channel and Crash Course. And then we used the um, online textbook and the paper textbook to take some notes about air masses and fronts. We played a couple games of Quizlet, Quizlet Live, and then we finished off class with a Google Classroom exit ticket that was graded and did go into the um, gradebook. For homework, don't forget, you have a quiz next class, Friday, January 18th, and that quiz is on weather tools like anemometers, barometers, there are about um, six of them. Also, it's on isotherms and isobars, air pressure, land breezes and sea breezes, as well as what we learned today on air masses and fronts. So let's take a look at this again. When we think about air masses, air masses are big air masses, big chunks of air that all have the same temperature and humidity characteristics. So they're named based on where they're formed and um, what their humidity and temperature characteristics are. So there are air masses that are named like continental arctic or continental polar or continental tropical, for instance. So the continental versus maritime is telling you about the humidity. So maritime, think of marine or mare in Spanish, I believe means sea. So that's an air mass that formed over an ocean. So as you can imagine, if you're forming an air mass over the ocean, you're going to have water vapor rising as the water evaporates out of the oceans. And as it rises, it's going to incorporate with that air mass. So maritime air masses, any air mass with the word maritime in it, is going to be high humidity it's going to be considered wet or moist. Whereas a continental air mass forms over the land, forms over the continent. And as you can imagine, there's not very much water that's evaporating up into that air mass, so it's going to be relatively dry. Continental means dry, maritime means wet. Now, the second word in the air mass name has to do with the temperature. So Arctic means very, very cold, frigid. Polar means cold, and tropical means warm. The other thing we talked about were cold fronts and warm fronts. So here, this picture on the top left is showing you um, a picture of a cold front. That's the symbol for a cold front. It has, it's blue and it has triangles in it. And this cold front is moving east or southeast. The triangles point the direction that it's moving. When a cold front comes through, cold air is more dense, so it's just going to bulldoze through and push all that warm, moist air up because warm air is less dense. As you push, push moist air up, it's going to create clouds, and those clouds are going to turn into cumulonimbus clouds, or maybe just cumulus clouds, but oftentimes cu cumulonimbus clouds, and that's going to cause violent storms or thunderstorms. Now, if you have a warm front, that's a little bit different, because now you have warm air moving over cold air, and it's going to act differently because warm air has a lower density, so it's not going to bulldoze through, it's just going to sort of meander really, really slowly um, at a low angle across the cold air. That's also going to cause cloud formation, but it's going to be different sorts of clouds. Now here on the left hand side, you see this red symbol for the cold front. Cold fronts are, I'm sorry, red symbol for the warm front. Warm fronts are symbol symbolized with the half circles, usually with red, and the half circles are pointing the direction that the front is moving. So this picture on the left, the front is moving to the northeast. On the bottom here, you can see the clouds that are formed in a warm front. You know a warm front is coming when you see cirrus clouds, those wispy clouds high in the air, followed by cirrostratus, then altostratus, then finally nimbostratus rain clouds. You're not going to have violent storms with a warm front. You're going to have steady rain. 
let's take a look at the exit ticket for today. Overall, people did really well, but this question here students had a hard time with. It says, which map best represents the type of fronts and direction of movement of these fronts in relation to the low pressure center? So you probably remember from last class, we talked about low pressure systems and high pressure systems. If you don't remember that, you really wanna review your notes before the quiz on Friday. Low pressure systems rotate counterclockwise. So in this case, um, you see here you have a cold front moving um, southeast and then a warm front moving northeast. So that's indicating to you a counterclockwise direction. Whereas in option two, it's moving the other way. So this option two is moving in a clockwise direction. So you would rule that out because low pressure systems rotate counterclockwise. So option two is no. And option four would also be a no because that's rotating clockwise. So your only choices were option one or option three. Now you're thinking, where does the cold air come from? The old cold air is coming down from Canada. So it's gonna come down from this region here and then the warm air is gonna move up here on this side from um, the south. So the correct answer for this question would be option number one. That's it for today. Make sure that you're studying the Quizlet vocabulary and that you study your notes from last um, Tuesday, January 8th. Look at the January 8th post on Google Classroom and Thursday, January 10th. You want to also look at that post on Google Classroom so that you're ready when you come in here on um, Friday. If for some reason we have a snow day, we don't have any school, the quiz is going to be moved and this quiz is going to be on second quarter. So you want to make sure that you're ready when you come in on Friday. All right. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.